All right, you guys, today we're talking about the Gracie 1314. So I know that we've learned a couple of the other instruments in class, but today this is the one that we're gonna be going over. Um, it's another area-specific curette. Um, this is just some of the parts of the instruments that I know that we've talked about before, but I just wanted to review with you um, the different parts. We have, here we have the handle, and then we have the shank, and the working end. So this is our, this being our mirror, this being similar, similar to a curette, and uh, same here. So we have the handle, the shank, and the working end. Where's the terminal shank that people keep talking about? The terminal shank is actually gonna be right here before you get to the working end of the instrument. So right here would be your terminal shank. Okay. Okay. So then just parts of the instrument that we've talked about too before, uh, just showing that, you know, this is similar to a Gracie with that rounded toe and the rounded back. This would be the face of your instrument. This underneath here is gonna be the back and here would be the lateral surface. And then the curette is used for sub and super gingival calculus. It's used on posterior teeth, only for the distal surfaces of those teeth. So each end, each has one cutting edge on a Gracie. This one here has two, it's showing two there, but we only have one cutting edge per working end on the Gracie 1314. Um, the curette that we're talking about has a rounded toe and then it also has that rounded back that we talked about before. So this back here is gonna be rounded so that you can go subgingival with that. Um, the design characteristics, uh, we, I know we've talked about the sickle scalers, they're triangular in cross section. You know, when you cut across that front of that instrument, if you were to take that working end and cut it in half, these are the different shapes that they show. So this would be like your sickle scaler is more a triangle. This would be the shape of your universal curette. And then an area specific curette is kind of like that semicircle right here. They have the rounded back and toe that we talked about. And then it is already self angulated at 70 degrees. So when that terminal shank is parallel to the posterior surface, the distal surface of your posterior teeth, it's actually gonna be angulated at that 70 degrees, which is our calculus removal stroke. So there isn't any need to um, adapt it to the tooth anymore. You just use the working stroke as long as it's parallel to the distal surface, and that's gonna, gonna do it for you. Um, we talked about the fact that it has one cutting edge per working end, and the distal surfaces of posterior teeth is where we can use it, and it is also self-angulated. So this is kind of the difference. We, with the Gracie here at the 1314, we actually have a complex shank. So when we're talking about the difference between a simple and a complex, the complex shank is used for more posterior teeth. So it's gonna have those bends in it, similar to the Gracie 1314. The 1112 has a little bit less of a complex shank because you're using it on the mesial surfaces. So on the distal surfaces, we have that bigger bend in it. And the simple shanks are gonna be straighter and used for those anterior surfaces of the teeth. Um, when you're identifying the correct working end of a Gracie 1314, and there's a couple different ways to kind of identify with that. Uh, one of the ways, the correct working end when you're facing it to the mesial buccal surface of the tooth, you can look at it and when the face tilts towards the tooth, and you're not gonna see that entire um, face of the instrument, it should be tipped towards the tooth. And if you have the wrong working end, this is a picture of the incorrect way, and you have it on that mesial surface on the buckle, the face is gonna be slightly tilted away from the tooth, so the entire face will be visible for you to see. And then another good way to know is that when the lower shank is parallel to that distal surface, so when you're putting the Gracie 1314 to the distal surface of a posterior tooth, you're gonna be looking for that shank to just come straight up and down and be parallel to the long axis of that tooth. This would be the incorrect working end. You'd see that the functional shank is going to be down and around the tooth. This is not how you want this to look. So you want it to look this way, parallel, nice and parallel to the long axis. So it is a complex shank design and it's used for light to moderate sub and super gingival calculus. So you can go underneath the tissue and then um, for light to moderate. So when you, when you get to those heavy ones, you kind of want to move to like a universal that we'll talk about next week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a video really quick. So in the video, I just wanna let you know right away that when they talk about this Gracie 1314, they have a different um, manufacturer that they have their instruments produced by, and they're going to say that it's at 60 degrees, the terminal shank. 
It is not 60 degrees, the ones that we're using in clinic are at 70 degrees. So I just wanted to make sure you knew that before you watch the video. So here's the video. 1314 and it's an area specific curia made for posterior teeth, distals only. So what you're gonna do first is establish which end is your correct working end. I'm gonna be working on the maxillary buckles of one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm gonna establish square with the fulcrum and look at my terminal shank to see which end is parallel. So see this end is gonna lay across the tooth and this end is perfectly parallel. So I would be retracting the cheek with my mirror. I would have my patient close about halfway down. The patient is in a maxillary position and I'm at eight or nine o'clock since this is an area towards me. The Gracies are automatically offset. Your Anapatis and Gracies are offset at 60 degrees. See, this is where I said it's actually, ours are gonna so be at 70 degrees, not 60. your curette towards the two. So you're gonna start distal line angle. You will close the blade upon insertion to get to the base of the pocket. And then just stand back up on your fulcrum and do distal line angle and around to the distal. And go each tooth distal line angle into the distal. Distal line angle into the distal. And this is your Gracie 1314. It is distals only on the posterior teeth. All right, so do we have any questions at all about this? Nope. Okay, so what we're gonna do to just kind of go ahead and wrap it up is we're actually gonna play a quick Kahoot just for fun. So I have you guys go ahead and go on to Kahoot. And I have the game pin here for you. So when you log on, you're just gonna go ahead and enter that game pin and let me know when you guys are ready. All right, everybody's ready? Okay, we'll go ahead and start. All right, get ready. The first question. Nice, good job. Yep, it's gonna be that semicircular and cross section. Nice. Yep, those distal surfaces of those posterior teeth back there. Good job. And the face of the Gracie 1314 is angled at what degrees to the terminal shank? Nice work. You guys are smart. Yes, it can be used subgingively and supergingively. Make sure you read this one. There's a couple different answers, so just make sure you choose one of the right answers. Nice. How many cutting edges does it have on each end? Yeah, one cutting edge per end. Make sure you read them carefully. <laughs> it is a rounded toe. I know this one tricks a lot of people, so you gotta just make sure it's the toe and not the tip. Curvy is complex, man. 
All right, nice work, ladies. Anybody have any questions for me today? Mm -hmm. All right, so when we go ahead and go into the clinic um, later on today, we'll actually be applying those skills and we'll be using our type it ons for that. All right. Thank you. You guys can go ahead. You're excused.